All right, so uh, hello everyone. So this will be the, our first uh, seminar this semester. So we're glad to have a Dr. Lu Ming Zhao from University of Bordeaux. So uh, the title is a Galapagos homology of PID fields and uh, phyto modules. Please. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, thanks everyone for being here. So let me share my screen first. So is it clear for everyone? Yes, it's clear. Okay, thanks. So I'm going to start. As introduced by Professor Liu, so today's uh, topic is Galois homology for PID fields. And phyto modules. So basically, I will start by recording some uh, a basic theory of phi gamma module and then uh, L complex and then phyto modules. And finally, I will present some results of my thesis. Basically, it is a construction of analog of earth complex, but not using phi gamma module, but using phyto modules. Okay, so let's start. Let me first fix some uh, notations. So let P be a prime integer, let K be a complete discrete valuation field of characteristic zero with this residue field small k required to be perfect characteristic P. So we don't require it to, to be uh, finite, not necessary finite. And then we take out the closure of K and we denote the absolute Galois group of K, GK. And then we complete and we denote the completion C. Then we take the tilt of C. Let's recall that it consists of a system of elements, which is compatible with the Frobenius map. So more precisely, we require that for any n, the n plus one index element reading to the piece power equals the index n element. After that, we take some element of it. We're interested in two special element of it. The first one is the element we denote by epsilon, which corresponds to Pnth root of unity. So more precisely, which means that it's element of a C flat, which means that we start with one and then we take pth root of unity and then continue. So with this uh, epsilon, we're going to define field extension of K. Let's call it K zeta which is the union of all the field extension and in the pnth root of unity. Actually, this is the cyclotomic extension of the K. So I, I put it in zeta, so I will using this notation. So then for second element of C flat, I'm going to pick all the pnth root of a fixed uniformizer. So let me explain. Again, system of elements. This time I pick pi zero to the pi, which is a fixed uniformizer of K, which means that the second element is a piece root of pi and then continue. Let me remark that for this pi two, each step when you choose the pnth root of, of uniformizer and continue, you have to make choice. So with a fixed choice, we define a new field extension, which is pi, 
again, we add all these tunes through the uniformizer. Okay, so let me summarize this field extension in a diagram, maybe. So we start with base field K. On the one hand side, we have K zeta. On the other hand side, we have K of pi, which is a Kummer extension. And then we have the compositum, the two fields, which is actually the Galois closure of K pi. Let me remark that this is not a Galois group. And to the story, this is not a Galois extension. And above all, we have this key bar. Okay, so let's give some uh, notation for the corresponding Galois groups. Firstly, for this Galois extension, let's give it GL. So the notations will all be uh, consistent with the sub uh, subscripts we put. So similarly, this side we have G K pi. And uh, for the gala group, K zeta over K, so here, with classical notation, gamma. And let me remark that when P is bigger equal than three, we can always assume it is topologically generated by, uh, by one element. So let's take a generator and denote it by small gamma. And then I look at this color group L over K zeta. I pick an element of it, I denote it by tau. The definition of tau is that I require tau acting on pi tute equal epsilon times pi tute. So this is in C flat. And I remark that with this choice of tau, actually, this color group of L over K zeta is topologically generated by this time. And I'll give one more remark that. Now, if you look at this color group L over K, actually this topological group, uh, this group topologically generated by tau is normal subgroup with quotient gamma. And actually this color group L over K can be written as semi-direct product of group generated by tau and group generated by gamma. Okay, so this is the basic setting. And then I give a notation as denote by rep zp gk. So actually here, you can change this with a general topological group. So here we're interested in this absolute Gala group GK. So we use this notation to denote the category of ZP modules of finite type, which I mean finitely generated. And then I require that there is linear and continuous. GK action. And similarly, you can define periodic color representation for GK. And now it's uh, interesting to ask, can we, how can we study this category of uh, integral periodic representations or periodic representations? So actually, Fontaine has studied this and he has constructed a theory called phi gamma modules, which can classify this category, of course, for phi gamma modules over certain rings. So maybe let's give some details. Let's come into the first section, phi gamma modules. So, to define Vega module, let's first define the, the ring it is defined over. So I start with E0. So it looks like the ring integer OE0, I define to be 
take the real width vector of the residue field small k and take the formal power series ring with variable eta. And then I invert eta. I take the PID completion. This is classical construction. So then I embed it into the real width vector of C flat. C flat is as we described above. So we have to point out this eta is mapped to Tashmir lift of epsilon minus one. And then we take its fraction field, is zero, takes maximum ramified extension, we take its completion, sorry. So we take the real integer and take the completion, denote by OE zero ramified. And then the final we are going to define is defined over, let's get called the OE, which is OE zero, are refined completion fixed by G key zeta. Let's remark that there is natural parallel action of this ring we just constructed. And for binis, and so look at this OE here. Sometimes we have a gamma action, uh, for Binis action, and a gamma action because it takes the point fixed by GKZ. So let's look back to this diagram here. So the basic idea of the Vega module theory is that in order to recover the whole gamma action, so this part, we want to use the intermediate field KZ here. And then we study firstly the GKZ representations, which by the theory of field of norm uh, given by Fontaine de Wittenberg G, actually it tells us that this part of the information you can summarize with just some fine modules over correct range. So what is left beside this GKZ is a quotient, which is this gamma. That's why we expect we can recover the whole color action from this part of final D information and in this gamma action. So let's define phi gamma modules precisely now. Let's define phi gamma module over OE we just, we just constructed. So it consists of Ital phi modules. Over OE. So for this, uh, let me explain. For this, I mean that firstly, it is a OE module finite type. Then you do it with a Frobenius map. And the Ital here is just uh, requiring that the linearization of this Frobenius is isomorphic. And then this, this is the part of the fine module. And then we have the gamma part. The gamma part we require. There's continuous. Semi-linear action of gamma. Of course, we require this gamma to commute with the action for Venice. Okay, basically this is the FEGA module over the OE. And then we come back to our question. As I, as I said, the uh, content use this FEGA module to classify integral PID representations because our FEGA module is over OE. So let's see. Constructed a functor. Let me describe this. We start with the integral PID representation T. And the D of T is defined as follows. So this OE unramified completion, let me remark, I only, I only defined OE zero unramified completion. And once we define OE, 
by the same procedure. Actually, they give you the same ring. We extend the scatter from ZP to this ring, and then we take the point fixed by GQ zeta. So as I already said, so over this coefficient, we already have Frobenius and the gamma action. So this Frobenius just tensor one, you extend it to a Frobenius over the whole module. And for the Galois action, it's by diagonal action on both sides. So indeed, because it's again fixed by GK zeta, actually we have a gamma action. So this construction of DT indeed it has this phi gamma D structure. And conversely, we start with any phi gamma module, let's say D, and then you construct integral periodic representation. We extend scatter the same ring. So this time it's OE module, and it takes a point fixed by Frobenius, and then this is a ZP module. Actually, this functor, these two functors are quasi inverse. So this is WH is a equivalence of category. This is the theorem of Fontaine. Tells us that this is a equivalence of category. Okay, so now if we have classified these integral PID representations, so very natural question is, can we recover some information of a PID representation from its phi gamma modules? It's very natural to ask a question like this. So let's keep the same notation as we just saw here. In the definition. So the question is, can we compute continuous scalar cohomology of a piadic, of an integral piadic representation T just using this phi gamma module associated to it? Actually, the answer is yes. Here comes the theory of the uh, so let's come into the second section, which is F complex. So actually, F constructed a complex, which is you start with the integral PID representation, SAT, and using its associated phi gamma module construct a complex just to use this phi gamma module. And then the homology of the complex he constructed computes the continuous scalar homology of the started integral periodic representation. So let me write down. Let me first write down the complex. So we have uh, phi and gamma. Gamma is topologically generated by small gamma. So here we have phi minus identity on the first position. Second position is gamma minus identity. And the gamma minus identity minus phi minus identity. Let's give this complex a name because we will construct many complex later. It's better to give a system a notation to make it easy to distinguish. So I call this C phi gamma T. So this phi and gamma is telling us that it's morphisms by using phi and gamma. And this T is telling us this T comes from this periodic representation T. So the theorem tells us that the homology of this complex to morphic to continuous scalar homology this integral PID representation T. So 
So this is a very nice theory. But again, we have some question for this. A question now is, can we replace k zeta extension k by a Kummer extension, which is k pi here, we fix that beginning. And then we redo all the theory, which means that their analog of phyto module theory, which anal uh, analog to phyto module theory, and then with the phyto module theory, can you have a complex which is analog to our complex, which computes the correct Galacomology? So let me maybe explain more. Why do we want to replace k zeta by k pi? So maybe it's a little early to introduce Poikis module here, but let me briefly say that by the work of Bohoy and Kaysin, recent 15 years maybe, there is a Boykissin module, which is very useful to study color representation. For example, for those representations comes from divisible groups for semi-stable representations, they're very useful. So let me quickly mention, basically, this boy case modules, they are again, fine modules, but defined over a smaller ring. So let me define it. So this S, by definition, is W ring of, uh, with vector of the residue field again, take power series of rival U. This time we embed it into WC flat. I map this variable u to the Schmiller lift of pi tilt. And the boy kissing module, actually, it's well, you already denoted this m. And so it's s module, so you do it with the Frobenis. So those boy kissing modules, as I explained, is very useful. And actually, the question to replace k zeta by k pi, k pi is the same as asking whether can we find a analog theory of a complex which for example when the representation comes from two divisible groups which tells us that it has boy kissing module can we have an analog of a complex using the boy kissing module associated to this representation comes from two user group and compute this color module To do this, at this moment, our earth complex isn't very hopeful to do this. Why? So let's look a little back. Here we have a very similar embedding to WC flat. So our base ring OE actually relies on the embedding which maps the variable eta here to epsilon minus one. But if you look at this base ring S defined for Boikis modules, it is in some sense a different embedding. Actually, the to answer the first question, is there an analog theory of Feige Modi theory? Here comes uh, uh, Xavier Gabriel theory of uh, Feige modules. So let's go into the Feige modules. So to we'll start with this, let's, as I explained, we will change to this ring, of course. So let me first define OE. So for this is classical notation, I don't want to change it, but there is an abuse of notation. So this OE here, so the attention, it, uh, it is not the OE corresponding to the cyclotomic extension belt. More precisely, I'm going to define it. This time, we're going to use the embedding similar as when we define this OKC module. So, completion. 
we can embed into WC flat. This time we're going to map this variable to PyChute. And you see by doing this, it's reasonable to, for example, we do tensor product over this S. Actually, we will see this again in the application part. Okay. So let's give the definition of FITO module now. Actually, this will be FITO modules over OE. And there is another ring, which is bigger than OE, let's call it OE tau. And let me quickly mention what is this OE tau. This OE tau is actually the ring width vector of C flat. I take the point fixed by GL. So final modules over OE and OE tau consists of the following data. Firstly, again, we have a tau, phi module over OE. Secondly, recall that for phi gamma module, we have a gamma action. But as I explained here, there's no hope to have a gamma action by the same, same way or similar way as Fontaine's phi gamma module theory. Let's go back a little to this diagram again. The problem is, as I explained, this is not a gamma extension. But luckily, if you look at this isomorphism here, this tau, this group element tau, it's possibly can help us to end the, the missed information. So we hope with the GK pi representation information, which is again, let me remark, can be classified by just five modules over appropriate ring. We hope we can use this part of a phi module information here, ending a tau action. I hope we can glue them together to recover the program action. So this is the basic idea of Xavier Gavuzo's phi tau module theory. And actually it works, but as you can imagine, there are some technical conditions for the gluing. So I'm going to write it down now. So actually, the second uh, data requires, there exists a tau semi-linear operator. Let me call it tau d over d of tau, which is defined to be o e tau tensor with D over OE. Such that there's technical condition here for any element small x in D, not necessary in D tau, but only in D, and any element, group element G in G key pi, function by GL, whose Cyclotomy chapter is positive integer. The following condition is satisfied. So G composes tau D acting on X equals X reason to the power chi of G minus, sorry, tau D reason to the power chi of G minus one acting on X. Okay, so this is technical condition. And I remarked that, again, this category classified the integral periodic representations. So we have So for phyto modules, let me denote this category by a new notation because I will construct several versions of phyto modules to be consistent. I will always write mod phyto and put the coefficients here because there will be several different version coefficients. 
So here's over OE and OE tau. So again, start with integral PID representation. Here, similarly. So again, for this modified version of OE here, you can similarly define OE RMA fight with a hat. And then the different here, before we take point fixed by GK zeta, this time we take the point fixed by GK pi. This is just the, the phi module part. Recall that for phi tau module, there's two part information. The first part is a phi module, it's denoted by D. And here there is a D tau. Sorry, so I didn't mention that this D here was the phi module D. I should put it here. Okay, for this detail, here let me remark, actually it is, WC flat, tensor T, it takes the point, X by GM. And I remark that actually tau action, which I write tau semi-linear operator tau D, the tau action here for this d tau t comes from a integral PID representation t. This action is just tau tensor tau in this WC flat tensor t. It has a natural tau action. And actually why we need this d tau is because your tau action here, when you're just acting on the phi module, it does not preserve the phi module. It runs out of the phi module and it lies in d tau. That's why we need this detail here. So this is really technical difficulty. We do theory of phi tau module. You want to compare with phi gamma and you find phi tau module, there are some technical condition. Okay, so this is the theory of Gabriel. And so as we said, now a question is. So is, is the curly D um, a finite OE module? Sorry? The curly DT that you wrote on the right hand side, is that a finite OE module? Yes, because uh, finite weak module, is that what you asked? Finite um, OE module. And then it's not o, finite OE module, it's a finite OE tolerable. So this D is over OE because we have Gala group. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. That, that one. Yeah. yeah, this is GK pi, actually. Actually, this is the same Gala group when you pass to the residue field. Yeah. Uh, so like in the phi gamma, wait a second. Um, uh -huh. So in the phi gamma thing, you, I think- In the phi know. gamma thing, it's, the, it's very similar. It's the, so here the OE RMFI is different and there is isomorphic to GK zeta. So it's again, over OE, but, but you, so that's as I remarked, this OE here was not the OE for FEGA module. For FEGA module, we have the same, uh, right. for FEGA module here is the same. This Gala group, GK Zeta, is isomorphic to this uh, uh, Gala group. Yeah, so, yeah. so I guess I'm, um, so o, OE zero and OE, are they the same here? They OE zero and OE for FEGA module, they are not the same, but for FI tau module, actually they are the same. Actually, ah. phi gamma module, it's, uh, in this sense, it's a little easier than phi gamma module. Ah. Yeah, if you define the same way as we define phi gamma module, actually the OE is the OE zero. Oh, so, I, I see, I see. Because it's like, okay, like, yeah, like yeah, algebraic closure is like pre-zero series or something. Yeah. And then, okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question, Google remark, I should mention. This OE actually is coincides with the OE zero if we define it before. We already add all the pieces of unity. Okay, so let's continue. We come back to the question at the beginning. Uh, we want the phyto module to be a candidate to construct a, a complex, which is an analog of R complex. So, question: analog of R complex.
Uh, the answer is again, yes. So this is section four. So actually, this is the first result of my thesis, which is a construction of an analog of a complex using phyto modules, and it computes the correct Galois cohomology. So let's see the let's state the detail here. So complex C three phyto. So before I define this complex, I have to first introduce uh, some new notations. So let's see, we are under the notations here. We start from periodic integral periodic representation T. And let's assume the associated phyto module which simply denote by D and D tau. And then I define a subgroup of D tau as follows, which you might feel a little strange, but I will explain why we need this thing. Consists of elements of detail, such that when you apply gamma on X, equals identity times tau D, composition of tau D, till tau D written to the power chi of gamma minus one, acting on X. So this condition, cut out a, a, sub, a subgroup of theta. So now I'm going to define the complex C phi tau. As the notation itself implies, this time we will use this tau operator instead of a gamma operator before. So the map is similar as before for Venice minus identity, and then tau D minus identity. Recall that tau D is the tau semi-linear action over, over D tau, in particular it acts over D. So we have this, sorry, there's missing there. So let me first state, Actually, the homology of this complex computes the Galois homology. Of T. So why say Galois homology is always continuous Galois homology? Sorry. So let me give some. Uh, Remark. So first, uh, maybe I give quickly basic idea of the proof. The proof is a uh, something's classical. Actually, you compute h zero. You directly compute h zero. You, you say that is the correct one. And then you prove the functionality of the functor, which is the homology of the complex we constructed. You show that it's a homological delta functor. And then you prove it has the effaciability. It's effaceable, sorry. This is a basic idea of the proof. So let me give some quick remark about this d tau zero, which is a little strange. Actually, this d tau zero comes out when we want to uh, construct our complex such that the H1 of our complex is isomorphic to the extra one group of the corresponding integral periodic representation, which means the, the group of which classified, uh, which classified all the extensions of uh, T by the trivial representation ZP. It's for this reason, this D tau zero comes there which means that if we put this theta zero here, the H1 of the complex is isomorphic to the extra one, which we know that uh, will be isomorphic to H1 of the color group. So first remark, theta zero. And the second remark is that 
actually we cannot really avoid detail zero. Detail zero works. It doesn't uh, tell us that uh, maybe there are other choices that doesn't work. It doesn't tell us, but a more natural choice would be just for detail. And actually just check some uh, um, trivial representation. For example, T in characteristic P case, you will see that the H1 is, is not correct. And similarly, the other choice, if we replace this detail by Frobenius minus one of D, this is again a complex, which is more natural than the complex we constructed here. But again, it doesn't compute the correct Galois homology. So, yeah, yeah, um, in brief, we have tried several versions, but this one works. And uh, all other natural choices doesn't work. Uh, thirdly, I quickly mentioned, actually, uh, there's another theory, uh, an analog of R complex was constructed by uh, Davex Hibeto uh, in his thesis. Actually, he constructed a complex with four terms, not using Phyton modules, using something uh, very similar as Phi gamma modules. So for Phi gamma modules, we take the intermediate field, key zeta. For Phyton modules, we keep we, keep, we take the intermediate field Kummer extension, ki pi. Tavares uh, he takes the composition of the two fields, which is the L, the Galois closure of ki uh, pi, which uh, as we can imagine, it works because in this time, there's no problem of uh, non-Galois extension. In that theory, he constructed some called phi g infinity modules and then constructed a complex with four terms and computes the correct uh, Galois homology. Our complex here actually it refines his complex, at least in the case when the residue field small k is finite. Okay. So, Tavex Kibel. Actually, did this in his thesis. So now let's go to some more versions of uh, Phyton modules. So the first uh, version is uh, we want, again, uh, our complex. This time we want to have a PC operator. Which will be defined over unperfect tape. Better say partially unperfect tape coefficients. So let's, let me quickly recall for phi gamma module series. There's already a PC operator. For example, over the coefficient ring is defined with the inverse of Frobenius composed with the trees of uh, OE over Frobenius. This is the extension of the dimension degree P. And uh, with this construction, this, this is actually a left inverse of the Frobenius. And then you just uh, say tensor one, you extend it to operator over D, which is again a left inverse of Frobenius. This is for phi gamma module theory. And similarly, for our phi tau modules, let's say D, D tau, we can again define a C operator over D. But the problem is, to define complex using PC operator. You really have to have a PC operator not only defined over D, but also over D and tau. The question is, I put question, can you define a C over D tau such that when you restrict it to D, it's the already existing C, which is a similar form right here. The answer, unfortunately, is no. 
The reason is very simple because STT, is, as we described, is defined over a ring like this. This C flat is a perfect ring. This and plus the part information that D is it out this well actually not difficult tells you that the forbidden actually is isomorph is a bijection word in town. And if you have a C operator, which is again a left inverse of forbidden, this will tells you that this C D tau is again a bijection on D tau and it will be in particular injective. But this C D defined by this formula here is not injective. So I just summarized the problem here is that the coefficient WC flat point fixed by GL, here the residue field for WC flat is perfect. This is the problem. So how do we fix this? So there is already a theory um, by Xavier Gapuzo, he constructed version of the uh, unperfect version of this ring. So uh, in short, let's say it quickly. You first uh, have a unperfect version of C flat. And then you fix a coin ring, which is compatible with the Frobin is on it. I put a U here to, to always remember it's on perfect day. And then the coefficient now, uh, uh, so this is a semi, this is an analog thing of this WC flat, but which is an unperfected version. And then you have to remember to, to keep the point fixed by GL. This new ring we're going to define to be O E tau. So after this definition, actually, the way we want to solve the problem is that we construct a, a new category of phyto modules this time over the coefficient OE and OE, sorry, this is not OE tau, OE tau is already defined, OE U tau to, to tell us that it's an unperfected coefficient. The, the definition is very similar, you just to change, change the coefficient, so I don't write detail, but to distinguish between different categories, this time I will write D U tau for the elements inside. And then with this new category of vital modules, we can again construct complexes. We start with phi tau complex. Remember, recall that we already have a, a phi tau complex which works. This time we have an unperfected version. I don't write it down now. It's just uh, you replace all the d tau zero before with d u tau zero. What is d u tau zero? The zero there is always the same condition to help you to cut out the part of the subgroup of this d u tau. So the same complex, same morphism. So it naturally embeds into this c phi tau. And then what is a little different is we construct the complex with C tau. So this C tau, let me quickly write it. This time D U tau zero, D U tau zero. Here we have Frobenius minus identity. Sorry, here is C minus identity. And then tau D minus identity. Okay, actually we can construct the morphism from this C, C tau U to this C phi tau U. So result of us success, successfully proved that actually both two morphisms are quasi isomorphic. So as a result, this tells us that C phi tau U and see C tau U, we both compute the correct color homology.
And then actually there are several different uh, versions. So let me quickly mention it maybe. This is also a version with over-convergent co coefficients. I just uh, uh, quickly mention what is over-convergent. So for fake gamma modules, this work is finished by Shekulne, uh, Komed, and uh, for phyto modules, this is crewed by Gao and Python. So Shekulne and Komed, they prove that for phi gamma modules, we'll take a phi gamma module. Actually, this phi gamma module is isomorphic to a submodule over over convergent coefficient instead of OE, something OE tau. OE tau is smaller than it's contained in OE, and you can just extend scalar to. To, to recover this D. So the, the good thing is that now you can work with this overconvergent category and this over a smaller coefficient. And this category is uh, again categorically equivalent to the whole Chiadi Galois representation. And for Gao Python, this is for phyto modules. Similar results. Actually, the difficulty is for free module. Once you hold, you have the isomorphism for free module. The data follows quickly. So also for data, something similar. So actually, what we did is again have a complex. This time we say phi tau. U dagger, I don't write it precisely. It's the very similar complex, but this time we modify our coefficients to unperfected coefficients and also over convergent. Similarly, we can define a safe C tau, unperfected and the over convergent version. And we show that actually these two complexes, they are quasi isomorphic. And obviously, this embeds into the same say tau unperfected. We just uh, described before. If we can prove this is a quasi isomorphism, then the result is all the complexes will come to the correct cohomology. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't succeed to prove this. But at least uh, both the C phi tau e dagger and C phi tau e dagger it computes the correct cohomology for at least uh, 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 for each zero and each one. Okay, so I didn't say more about this. And then very quickly, there is a, also a complex over robot ring. It's very natural when you have a complex over, over convergent ring, you want to extend it to robot ring. So let me just uh, quickly mention that first that we have a phyto module, this time over robot ring and the ring bigger than robot, very similar to the construction before. So we call it R and R tau. So as you can imagine, there's D, this time we, we, we write it D hate dagger for to be consistent with the notation already used by Python, this part D Hig Tau Dagger. And actually, over the robot ring, there is a new operator, which is very similar as the log of Tau, which means that it's the infinitesimal version of Tau, which and the good thing is, this is uh, shown by Python that actually this uh, and Nabla, infinitesimal version of Tau D, it also preserves the phi module. 
So before we call that for your tau d operator, we're acting on the phi module d, it jumping out to d tau. But for this n nabla, we're acting on the phi module, it, pre it is preserved. So this is a very good thing because with this, you can expect to have a complex which only use the phi module and you can get rid of the strange d tau zero thing. This complex we're writing this way. Here's Frobenius minus identity, but here there is no tau, it's just n nabla. Here is n nabla minus, for some reason of uh, normalization, it's c times phi minus one. C is just a precise element lives in here, it doesn't matter. The reason for this is that, uh, is that because actually for elements of this robot ring, it's, a, it's of the form, formal series. this coefficients here and satisfy certain convergent condition. It uh, converges on some endless. I don't give the details. And this n nabla operator actually it's defined to be this when acting on elements of robot ring, you can, you can use this definition. And the problem with the coefficients here is because this n nabla doesn't commute with Frobenius. If you do Frobenius and do that n nabla, and you change the order, there is a there is a coefficient cost. Okay, don't see more about this. Then finally, let's see quickly some application. Sorry, before the application, I should also tell the result of this C phi and nabla. So we prove that for this complex. As you can imagine, it lose some information because it's the infinitesimal version of tau. What we proved is that the homology of this complex, it computes actually the direct limit of the Galois homology of GKN. What is KN? KN is the base field K and in the pnth root of uniformizer. And we proved this for i equals zero or one. We didn't success, successfully prove for i equals two. Actually, we constructed a pairing between the H0 and H2, very similar as the tab duality, but we cannot uh, prove the non-degeneracy yet. We, if we can prove the non-degeneracy of the pairing, we also have i equals two the holes. Okay. So finally, quick application. For the application part, let me put it quickly. Uh, start with a divisible group G, and you have a tech module, which by the theory of Boyan Boyan casing, you have a Boyan casing module. I just uh, mentioned I didn't I didn't define it before. So let's denote by this just by this uh, M. Okay, so under this notation, let me remark that if we compute the phi module of Q linear du of this TED module, actually this is so E is the fraction field of OE. As we explained, this is we can do this extend of scalar uh, extend of scalar now. And for the Feigen model, this is not doable. So we just translate this part of information into our complexes. And what we will have is corollary. Firstly, our complex when the representation comes from a PDU group, we can expect to rewrite it using just Boitisi modules. This part is 
e tau and you take the zero subgroup and you have Frobenius Let me remark that actually for boy QC mode, you only have a phi action, but by the work of Casey, he showed that actually you can have a, a nab action over N, which is very similar at the log of tau. So it's very reasonable. Kakuzo shows that start from this N nabla action, uh, N nabla action, actually you can recover this tau action. That's why we put the tau here. So tau actually is, in, is, is uh, finally, it's uh, expressed by formula of uh, N nabla. I didn't see more. And as I as we saw before, this complex computes the correct cohomology for this representation comes from chaotic representation. And similarly for that uh, complex over Hobar ring, you can have a version of this, still use the uh, boy casing modules. In that case, all the modules, all the final modules can be rewrite just uh, in this way, extend to the uh, Robar ring and then it computes the not use gala cohomology. It computes, as I said, direct limit, which IGK of this gala cohomology of this uh, representation comes from the user group and I equals zero over one. So this works a little more tight than the first one. Okay, I think I will stop here. Thanks. Sorry, it's a uh, All right, next talk. So any questions? Oh, uh, so I, I have a question. Uh, so that uh, for the P equals two, there, uh, the, that, that uh, there, there might be a slightly issue there, right? Yeah, actually if P equals two, um, gamma is not uh, necessarily generated, it's not generated by, uh, Topologically generated by one element. So, but I think the only should work just to, you have to add something to modify it. I think it's doable. Yeah. That's true. I think that uh, you can, it depends on the select your, uh, so it turns out, uh, I think uh, who, I think uh, there are someone who proved that you can select a parameter so that uh, you still, um, yeah, so the two pieces still can separate. I think that that should be fine. I think that's the only thing you need for that part. Yeah, I think so, yes. Yeah, P equals two case. Mm. Thanks for the question. Any other questions? So the, the K uh, starting the character zero, right? Yes. So, uh, yes. so Victor, yes. Yeah, what about the case character K? I mean, uh, base field K. This field is chapter Yeah. The rest of field chapter is P, yes. Yeah, I assume it is perfect, right? Yeah, the well, residual, residual field, field. I mean, uh, perfect uh, characteristic P. Okay. Yeah. So Not what is the K and the character is equal to is, is positive? Of the of the base field, yeah, yeah, base field, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, what if you replace the number field by function field? What what's going on? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, actually, I haven't uh, think about this direction. Mm -hmm. I was just the one to connecting this boy casing module with the R complex. Yeah, uh, I don't have a good answer in mind now. I I'm not sure. Uh, let me think. So the first question would be in how about the phyto module theory, right? Yeah, even I, I think the phi, even phyto module is not quite uh, there yet. Okay. Yeah. Probably so that uh, they so the classification probably is different. Okay. So uh, because everything is built on for such kind of classification by 
five module, although that, that's slightly different classification first. So then uh, if that will be different, uh, then everything should uh, be different by constructor compact there. Mm. Yeah, and firstly, you, you, you have to be able to uh, classify the GKZ or GK pi representation by five module. Yeah, as Professor Liu said. If the field of norm theory here it doesn't work, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a little complicated. Yeah, I will think about it. Thanks for the question. All right, any other questions? By the way, let's, let's thank the speaker. Let's stop. Okay, nice.